Hello everyone. Today we will be understanding one topic which is atoms and molecules. So in chemistry we will be understanding how that particular substance will be formed or we can say what is the composition of that substance. So in the previous sessions we have discussed that any substance if it has any mass or is it is occupying certain space it is called as matter now in today's session we will be discussing that how matter is divisible as we know that every matter is made up of certain particles so we going to learn about these particles in today's session and we going to learn that how these bases of all these chemistry is forming and we going to understand here so let's understand how we going to divide matter and what indian philosophers has actually discovered for us so let's start students before understanding matter let's divide matter again so maharshi kanand he actually postulated that if we keep on dividing this matter or we can say called as padarth we will get a very very small particle that will not be seen by naked eyes but as soon we reach and achieve the smallest particle we have reached this particle is called as parmanu he has actually discovered and given the postulates as well as and he has also make sure that this particular particle is not further divisible so we have reached the smaller particle the smallest particle here which is not further divisible which is given by maharshi kanath then the next indian philosopher pakuda katyayam has actually postulated that there are various forms of matter and because of these particles of matter they exist together as these particles are very small and chemistry is all about how that particular particle is going to exist so they exist in combination they exist together in combination so actually these particles has made friendships with the fellow particles so that they can exist on our planet in our nature so this was about the indian philosophers we have more philosophers the greek philosophers as well like democritus so they have suggested that we keep on dividing the matter if we keep on dividing the matter and we're going to reach at a certain time when mo no more division is possible no more division further is possible so we have reached a particle here which means they have actually given a term called atoms which means being invisible so they have actually i'm repeating they have actually given or suggested us that a time will be coming a particle will be coming that no further division will be possible and that particle they have named as atoms as they are very small and they are invisible from the naked eyes so this was the philosophers who has actually described about matter that how they are indivisible and they are very small and we have reached to a certain state but yes students for further classes for further grades you're going to understand that how these atoms are further divisible yes these atoms are also divisible that you're going to understand in higher grades also like electron proton and neutron so in today's session we have reached the smallest particle which is called atom of a matter okay coming back of this term which is combination so i have already cleared that the particles they cannot exist individually they have to take help so that they can chemically combine and they can achieve a state where they can exist 
so chemistry is all about existence how the particles take help of the fellow atoms and they try to exist in a particular state so let's understand the law of chemical combination combination how they are combining with each other so it's very very important law of chemical combination so there are basically two laws in this law of chemical combination the first law states that law of conservation of mass law of conservation of mass it states that mass can neither be created nor be destroyed in a chemical reaction so the mass remains same we cannot create it and we cannot destroy it so amount we have taken for getting a chemical reaction the same amount we gonna get so for example if we take any particular substance is getting reacting and we get a product the new substance which is being formed so the product mass of the reactants here and the mass of the products remains the same so we can write mass of reactants is equals to mass of products they can be exchanged but the total will remain equal so that is the first first law of chemical composition combination the law of conservation of mass let's go to the next law of the law of chemical combination which is law of constant proportion as the name is suggesting constant proportion so in a chemical substance we have taken suppose nacl any chemical substance the elements are always present here the elements we have sodium we have chlorine here the elements are always present in a definite proportion by the mass so that will remaining the constant so we can write in a chemical substance the elements are always present in definite proportion definite means fixed by mass so this is the definition of law of constant proportion let's understand by example so in water which is chemical name is h2o the ratio of mass of hydrogen to the mass of oxygen is always 1 is to 8 respectively so that will be constant in proportion in every water we will be taking so we have discussed about the law of chemical combination the first law we have discussed the law of conservation of mass the second law we have understood about the law of constant proportion here but these actually laws are lacking certain explanations they are lacking that how these laws are actually been proven so we have to prove it okay so hence the john dalton gave his theory about matter so now john dalton came up with his theory about these particles that is called as atom so he said that the smallest particle of matter is called the atom let's discuss the dalton's atomic theory as there are certain lack king or drawbacks in these explanations so dalton had come up with his theory and yes definitely he has certain lack or drawbacks so next scientist he came up so this is how the theory is actually being evolved or the atoms are actually being evolved so let's understand the first theory or the first postulate which don dalton had discovered so every matter we have already understood this that every matter is made up of very very small tiny particles and they are called atoms so this is the first one every matter is made up of particles which is called the atoms atoms are not the second 
postulate is the atoms are not divisible we cannot divide it further it is the smallest part of the matter and we cannot divide it further so and it cannot be created or destroyed not be created or destroyed as well we cannot create any atom and we cannot destroy any atom in a chemical reaction so this is the second postulate which john dalton has given us the third postulate is that all the atoms of a given element so we have given suppose sodium magnesium calcium hydrogen neon any element we which we have given so these elements are having atoms definitely because they are matter now these atoms are in the same size these atoms of a certain element will be having same size mass as well as all the similar chemical properties and physical properties as well so we have discussed that each element or each matter is made up of atoms which is similar in size mass and chemical properties so this we have understood about the one of the theory of dalton next we have reached with the atoms the next is we're going to understand about that atoms these atoms as they has they have to exist in nature so they will be combining so these atoms will combine in a ratio likewise we have understood about h2 also so these atoms will be combining in a ratio of one, of a whole number basically so that they can form a compound so we have understand that these atoms will be combining so sodium atom and chlorine atom they will be combining and they will be forming a chemical combination so that they can form a compound so that they can exist in nature and this relative number and the kinds of atoms are constant so the atoms will be constant here in a given compound i hope it is clear so let's quickly revise what we have understood about dalton's atomic theory we have understood about the matter that every matter is made up of very small part particles which is called atoms then we have understood that atoms are not divisible uh, they cannot further be divisible they cannot be created or they cannot be destroyed this is all under the D dalton's atomic theory okay and then in any chemical reaction we have understood that the uh, atoms of a given element is having similar in size mass chemical properties as well and these atoms are combining with other atoms to form a compound as a whole number so this we have discussed in dalton's atomic theory i hope it is clear so let's move further and discuss more about atoms now as we have discussed about elements so any substance any matter whether it's gas oxygen hydrogen or we can say nitrogen we have iron aluminum so many things around us which is made up of these elements okay and what is there inside an element let's find out so elements are those substances which have only one kind of atom so all the atoms in an element will be of similar kind that is why their size their mass their physical properties everything is similar in an element so let's move to these atoms now and discuss that it is the smallest particle of an element and that will be taking part in a chemical reaction basically so, but as we have understood that we cannot see these and the atoms in the by the naked eyes so the atomic radius is measured in nanometer it is that small it is being measured in the nanometers so talking about elements till now there has been discovered 118 elements yes 118 elements has been 
discovered till now and we have actually placed each and every element in a proper table so we have given and we have named every element and given a place in a table which is called as periodic table according to their size physical and chemical properties as well as and how similar they are with the fellow elements so we have actually created a periodic table that we going to understand in the higher grades also so talking about these elements as there are 118 and it's very difficult if we are using if we are chemically combining to write their whole name like magnesium chlorine it becomes so difficult to write the whole name especially when we are making reactions and uh, uh, writing down their symbols and compounds so what happens here we have under through gone through one theory which if we actually give a proper symbol to all the elements so again dalton has proposed this particular idea that let's give symbols to the elements so that it becomes easier for us to memorize to understand uh, and we don't have to write the whole name of the element so for example hydrogen he has given this symbol then we have phosphorus he has given this symbol and so on there are a lot of elements he has tried to given he has copper also so capital c he has placed here in between the circle then gold also he tried to create gold and capital g then we have oxygen which is empty circle which is the oxygen iron if he write i inside the circle silver capital s mercury so there are lines on the boundary of the circle which is mercury similarly there are so many symbols he has given like sulfur here like this lead capital l and uh, platinum capital p like these he has actually given a symbol but as you know there are so many elements uh, almost 118 elements uh, which has been discovered so it's really very really difficult to actually learn each and every symbol of every element right because there are so many elements so we have to do something else to in order to learn their symbols so now what happens here we have given proper symbol name so symbols of some common elements we have actually named them so there is a law or there are so many rules to learn the symbols of the common elements rule number 1 is hydrogen and if we take carbon so we can take the first letter as the symbol which is the capital h and capital c the rule number 2 says that if the two letters the first two letters are coming here or we can say the first letter is common here like for example hydrogen and helium we can say that the first letter is common here capital h and capital h right so what we have done in this case we have taken in helium hydrogen has been firstly evolved so we have already taken h so in this case we will be taking the second letter as well which is smaller so we will be writing capital h and small e so this uh, by this we can understand we are talking about the helium the third rule is that if the first and second letter is also similar like we can say magnesium and manganese so we can say that ma and ma both are common so we we have taken the first and the third letter here magnesium and the third letter is mn similarly like chlorine and chromium so here we can take first letter is c second letter h first letter c second letter h they both are common so here we can take the first and third letter so for chlorine it has become capital c small l and for chromium it has become capital c small r we cannot write capital c with the small or with the 
capital L as well. This is the wrong symbol. We have to write the first letter with the capital one where the second letter will be the always the smaller one. So this is how there are certain descriptions of every element with their symbols. So for example, hydrogen for H, helium for HE, carbon for C, then we have uh, copper for Cu, then we have cobalt for CO, then chlorine for Cl we have already discussed, boron for Ba, B, barium for Ba, irons. There are certain other elements as well. The rule, next rule is that has been given a proper Latin name. For example, sodium. Sodium in the Latin we say natrium. So we have taken capital N small a. Potassium also, potassium kalium we say. So we have taken K. Iron, ferrum we say. So we have taken capital F small e. So ferrum we have taken F E gold aurum so we have taken A U silver ar uh, argentum so we have taken A G so this is how the rules has been discovered so that we can give proper symbol to every element without getting confused and we can write down easily in the proper re chemical reaction. So these are the rules. Let's again revise it. So the first one, we will be taking the capital one. Then if this the two are common, the first letters are common, we can take the first letter and the second letter. But if in the case first and second letter is also common, we can take the first and the third letter where the, the uh, after coming from the second letter it will be coming in the small letter but the first letter will always be written in the capital letter and there are certain uh, ex uh, elements as well that has been given a proper latin name so we have taken their latin name as their symbol like sodium na potassium k iron fe gold silver so we have taken these elements as their latin names so these are certain rules by which we can actually give proper names or symbols to the particular elements and we can easily write down we don't have to write down magnesium we can just write down here mg we don't have to write down chlorine full we can write down uh, Cl, we don't have to write down whole carbon, we write C, oxygen, O, hydrogen, nitrogen, potassium, sodium. So this becomes so easy to remind and memorize the, all these elements. Okay, and we know these elements are having lots of atoms and we know that they are having the atoms which are similar in size, mass, all the properties are also similar as they are made up of one kind of atom. Okay, now let's talk about the existence. As we always and always understand that these atoms has to exist properly, they have to combine with the fellow friends so that they can make friendships and they can exist in our nature. So they are making a molecule now. So we have made a molecule. What is molecule? Let's understand. So yes, it is also the smallest particle of an element as well. As well. But what is the major difference between atom and molecule? The, a molecule is the one which can exist independently. The atoms can destroy, the atoms can ruin, but if we have to exist in the nature, we have to combine with the atoms or other uh, atoms of the elements so that they can create a molecule so that they can exist independently. For example, oxygen is not exist, does not exist as an atom, it has to combine with another oxygen atom to make a molecule. So whenever you have seen or read any re in, an, in reaction where O2 is written, we are talking about oxygen gas here. So O2 or oxygen is uh, in the atmosphere as well, exist as a molecule. In our air, in our atmosphere, oxygen gas is there. So how they are combining? They are combining as O2. So oxygen gas, lots of molecules are there to make a proper oxygen gas. So these are all the oxygen molecule.
so we have understood about these molecules that they can exist independently let's know more about molecules let's write down more about molecules now so molecules there are we have understood till now that they exist independently let's know there are two types of molecules the first one molecule of element and the second one is molecule of compound let's know first of all molecule of an element here so i was giving an example about oxygen so in this o2 molecule here we have understood that it is made up of two atoms right so uh, two oxygen atoms are com chemically combining to form o2 molecule so here we can see both the atoms to make a molecule is required same kind of element or same kind of atoms they require okay so molecule of element requires the same kind of atom to make a molecule but for example the second part we have molecule of compound let's give an example so here it is also a molecule to make a water so here we can say two hydrogen atoms chemically combine with one oxygen atom to make h2o here we can see that the atoms are of different element okay so that is why we have made a compound here we have more example like ammonia so one nitrogen atom com chemically combined with three hydrogen atom to form a molecule of a compound so they are making friendship so that they can exist independently here so we have two types of molecule molecule of an element and molecule of a compound molecule of a compound having different elements different atoms so that they can make a molecule but here molecule of element as the name suggests that the similar kind of atoms will be there to form a molecule like h2 n2 fe2 uh, f2 fluorine nitrogen hydrogen oxygen so many different elements that they are making molecules okay now let's understand these molecules can be different in their atomicity as well so we have given a proper term here let's understand here so the number of atoms which are present to make a molecule atoms which are present to make a molecule we have actually termed them as well it is called as atomicity and these atomicity are of different types it's monoatomicity it's diatomicity triatomicity and polyatomicity mono means one single di means two tri means three whereas poly we study polynomials in mathematics poly means many or we can say more than three okay so any molecule either of a uh, molecule of compound especially if it is having here mono di tri or polyatomicity let's understand what are the number of atoms which are present so in the here we can say sodium atom here we can say that it is one atom is required so we can say the atomicity is monoatomicity hydrogen we can say molecule of element here there are two atoms so we can say di atomicity will be there next we have water example so two hydrogen plus one oxygen gives three that means triatomicity nh3 one nitrogen plus three hydrogen gives four which is more than three it is polyatomic so similarly we have actually given the number of atoms which are present in a molecule we have termed given a term called as atomicity various types mono di tri and poly okay and these molecules of compounds which we have made they are joining together in a proper proportion and they are constituting a different types of atoms which we have discussed so if you are making a particular compound if you are making like this so they are combining all the 
molecule of this compound they are combining with the definite proportion of different different atoms so that they can combine they can give their inputs and they can exist independently which is the major 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 we can say given by the molecule okay so i hope till here everything is clear so let's move ahead now and discuss that how these particular compounds are being forming how they are helping each other and how they can exist independently that is the major source or the work of molecule so when they have to help each other they are called as ions let's understand more about the ions so the ions they are the charged particles some charges are given to the particles particles we know we are talking about atoms so when any charge either positive or negative so when any charge is given to these particles which is called as atoms they are called as ions so whenever you read the word ions this definitely comes to your mind that we are talking about charged atoms whether a positive charge or a negative charge okay so how they can form the ions let's understand so for example if it is a negatively charged ions so see this is so big words we are writing if you are talking about negatively charged ions we can say we are talking about an ion and if any particular ion is a positively charged ions then we have given a term which is called as cation so any atom which who is negatively charged we are called as an ion and any atom who is positively charged we are giving a term cation so the ions are forming in the two types an ion and cation and why they are forming just because they can help each other donate something each other give, form a friendship form a bond so that they can exist and make a molecule okay so yes for instance the ions possessing only one atom they are termed as monoatomic which we have discussed like sodium ion potassium ion okay ions which are possessing uh, more than one atom they are poly polyatomic as well like carbonate so these are the atoms and uh, charged one which are called as the ions now let's talk about the valency we are discussing that they are donating something to their fellow element to make a compound they are donating something but how many they are donating they are donating that depends upon the valency so now let's understand what is valency valency is actually the combining capacity how much capacity they are having so that they can combine with the fellow element and they can exist in the nature it is known as valency for example how many sodium atoms has been given to the chlorine so that chlorine and sodium can make a bond and form they can chemically combine to make sodium chloride so that they can exist independently this is what a valency means so let's understand here and if an any atom it has it can be further divisible which is electron proton and neutron here the atom part which is the electron will be donating and shared sometimes shared sometimes donating so that they can actually make a bond and they can exist so if any atom consists of one two or three electron in its valence shell then their valency can be one two or three valence shell means the outermost shell okay so let's discuss the valency now suppose for example sodium it has the atomic number 11 so we can write its configuration as 2 8 and 1 Two plus eight is ten. Ten plus one is eleven. So we can say the last outermost shell, 
so the outermost shell in chemistry we can say the valence shell this valence shell is having one electron so what do you think that one electron has to be donated by sodium or they have to accept seven electrons so that they can exist definitely they have to remove sodium has to remove the one atom right one electron basically so that it can give away and so that their electronic configuration gets stable so definitely sodium will be giving one electron to the fellow element which is chlorine so that they can accept now chlorine task is to gain one electron now he also required the chlorine atom also require one electron because its electronic class configuration is 7 so the chlorine atom require one more electron so that they can exist easily so that sodium electron will be given to the chlorine and chlorine will accept the electron now they are forming a bond and they are chemically combined to make sodium chloride and if any atom it has the outermost shell or valence shell is having eight electrons it is completely fixed completely normal completely balanced or we can say the electronic configuration is complete there thus they do not require any particular electron to stabilize so that is why their valency is always zero because they do not require any capacity or any combining capacity to make or to exist so that is why their valency is always zero coming back to sodium chloride what happens here that the sodium is donating one electron where chlorine is requiring one electron so that's why they have shared they have actually accepted and donated the electron and the chlorine has accepted the electron so they have formed the sodium chloride so let's understand how they actually make a chemical compound sodium valency plus 1 chlorine valency minus 1 this plus indicates the positive charge which we have already discussed that is the cation so let's write down here sodium here is acting as the charge here so it is the cation whereas chlorine it is having a negative charge it is acting as an ion okay so now we will be doing cross multiplication so that we can achieve so this plus 1 here and plus 1 will be coming here we will remove the uh, sign which is plus and minus and one one we can say like this so this is how a proper compound has been formed so we have to understand the valency we have to learn the valency so that we can make a compound let's understand more examples as well so for example hydrogen the valency is 1 helium as it is their uh, their octet is complete which is 2 so it does not require any electron to donate or to gain so that's why their valency is 0 lithium valency is 1 then carbon valency it is the four they share the electron that we will be understanding in the higher grades nitrogen they have valency as 3 oxygen valency as 2 and uh, they are written as o2 minus nitrogen as n3 minus and uh, we have lithium as well which is l1 plus so cation they will be donating minus so this plus charge indicates they will donate the electrons and minus sign like negative sign indicates that they will accept electrons as there was nh3 so h plus ion will be given to nitrogen so that they can exist independently similarly we have sodium which is one which we have discussed na plus then we have magnesium very important which is two valency mg2 plus so we have actually configured it made the uh, we have understood from the outermost shell the valence shell how much electrons they are having and that's why we have made the combining capacity which is the valency aluminum 3 which is al3 plus so this is how there are certain elements 
whose valency has to be remembered so that they can exist and they can make the compounds so let's know more examples for making chemical formulas so for example if we have to make the for example calcium hydroxide let's take the first calcium hydroxide as we have understood sodium chloride similarly we have to do the same rules we will be doing so calcium first we will be writing down the symbols calcium ca hydroxide oh now we will be writing the valency plus 2 is the valency of calcium minus 1 is the valency of hydroxide now we will be doing cross so ca1 oh whole twice with the whole twice there will be right so we can write we don't have to write one so we can write like this so this is how it's very important to know the valency and the chem chemical symbols of every element we have more examples let's find out aluminum oxide you always understood one thing that the cation will be first writing and then we will be writing anion so let's find out the symbols first aluminum is al oxygen here we have o then we will be writing the valency the plus 3 is the valency of aluminum then minus 2 is the valency of oxygen cross multiply let's do criss cross then al 2 2 will be coming here and o 3 so this is the formula chemical formula for the particular aluminum oxide i hope it is clear so as we have named and given the formula of every compound let's know the molecular mass as well molecular mass means we are actually calculating and doing the sum of their atomic masses so we have uh, for example two aluminum and three oxygen so we will be uh, multiplying the molecular mass of aluminum by two and then we will be multiplying the molecular mass of oxygen with the three so this is how let's take a very easy example first like h2o so we have molecular mass is one of hydrogen but we have two atoms here so we will be multiplying it with the two so we have two and we have the oxygen so we have uh, there is 16 is the molecular mass of oxygen which is only one atom is there so we will be multiplying it to one so that is the that now we will be adding this as the molecular mass mean the sum so 2 plus 16 is 18 units so that will be the molecular mass of water this is how we can calculate the molecular mass i hope it is clear so in this session we have understood the very basis of basics of chemistry how the chemistry has been evolved over the years first of all indian uh, philosophers has came up with the idea that the matter is further divisible and uh, they are called as atoms which is very small then uh, we have understood about the law of chemical combination that how these atoms are actually combining with each other to form and to exist independently like law of conservation of mass law of constant proportion then this we have come up with the dalton's atomic theory that uh, these matter is further not divisible but yes later on it has it was discovered that yes the atoms is further divisible as electron proton and neutron then we have understood about the uh, symbols that as there are so many elements has been discovered so we have to give proper symbols to these particular elements so we have understood the rules that how we can write down the symbols of the elements how they are similar with each other and the smallest element we can say the smallest kind of the atom will be similar of a particular element but different of the compound as well because they are forming molecules so that they can exist independently but there are molecule of elements and molecule of compounds as well so definitely the elements are having the similar kind of atoms where the compounds are having different kind of atoms. So and then we have discussed about the atomicity and ions, the charged ions, positive charges called cations and negative charges called anions. And we have actually made the formula by learning their valency, which is the combining capacity. I hope it is clear. Thank you so much, everyone.